everyone. I thought it was about time I did a review on our Kubota BX23S. Um, it's now 12 months old, uh, which is just blows my mind. Um, but I guess you know we've we've owned the block and been working the block for 12 months now. And um, and yeah, this guy has um, it's now got 140 hours on it. Um, and it's proven it's worth time and time again um, so yeah there's a few things that I've done to it and a few things I wish were a little better but uh, overall just really happy uh, with the purchase um, and I guess lucky lucky we got it um, when we did because I believe now there's um, six to uh, nine months wait for one of these if you uh, if you ordered due to uh, all the global supply issues <clears throat> so I thought I'd just um, talk through some of the modifications I've done to uh, make it a little better um, and all the things that I find really useful and, and maybe things that I wish were a little bit better. Alright, um, mod number one is the trusty toolbox. Um, it's great to have a few pins and a hammer and a cloth uh, on the tractor. Uh, this is my second toolbox attempt here. Uh, it's not been terribly successful. It's probably about to fall off, truth be told, um, because it does uh, sometimes get knocked when I'm working in, in amongst the trees, um, which is what happened to the first plastic one. So um, it's a it's a handy thing to have, but I wish uh, wish I could do a little bit better. Maybe on the inside. I know a lot of people mount them on the on the other side here, and. Um, and that actually may be better but i i just thought i'd always be hitting my elbow uh, on it so yeah toolbox handy um just wish we could do a little bit better uh, mod number two uh some work lights so um one of my favorite mods i've used them uh, a lot the uh the factory lights on the tractor are pretty dismal really um better than nothing but only just uh, but these work lights uh, are uh, amazing they are pretty expensive they are steady um, work lights that I bought off the steady Australia website um, and I've simply got them wired up into a splitter at the top which runs down the bar the uh, ROPS bar here into an extension and then um, I've simply hardwired into the battery um, I haven't wired into the lights themselves they are just simply controlled via a, um, a switch that again comes with the kit so this switch here hardwired to the battery just simply on or off uh, there you go you can see them there and uh, never had a problem with it you know I've never left them on or anything like that um, what I like about them is you can angle them infinitely within reason uh, I've got one pointing to the back and one pointing to the front but being able to uh, angle them up and down depending on where you need the light super handy uh, if you're doing a bit of work uh, at the end of the day or as we are sometimes um, at night um, feeding a fire so um, yeah one of my very first mods for the BX was the Art and Metal uh, Quick Connect uh, for the backhoe um, so what this does is complements the factory setup with a, um, a quick connect section in here where you put in a permanent pin on all your buckets um, and then to actually change out a bucket it's just one pin uh, that you need to worry about which uh, is fairly quick uh, and you can also, it makes lining it up very easy you can have that at chest height to, to change buckets and um, they're on and off within you know probably 20 seconds it's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite handy and next to that, while we're here down this end of the tractor, um, I did opt the mechanical thumb. Um, so that's been a, a really, that is a factory accessory. Um, and that's been a, a, a really handy thing to have when we've been moving trees and logs. Um, or in amongst a whole heap, heap of thick uh, lantern or something. You can use that thumb and the, and the bucket to um, grab a hold of things and away we go. Um, so another couple of uh, backhoe implements here, uh, we have the Art and Metal uh, Ripper, uh, which is a good tool to have. Uh, again, we used this a lot when we were helping clear the block, 
Um, really handy for ripping into roots and lantana and, and uh, weedy bushes. Um, basically the concept is that the, um, the ripper goes below the subsurface, you, you can curl that and um, get underneath the root ball and just uh, really rip it out uh, quite effectively. Um, it's yeah been been handy. The standard bucket, standard Kubota bucket with the machine is uh, behind it. Like I said it's about 11 inches I think it is that one. Um, so yeah it's yeah nothing wrong with that bucket. Uh, it has its purpose and I've used it a fair bit as well. Now if you've um if you've been on the internet and any of the Facebook groups, uh, you've probably heard about uh, wheel spaces uh, for the BX23. Uh, it's a, again another mod and uh, simply what they're talking about there is a, a wheel spacer that fits in between the factory hub and the uh, wheel to provide, in this case I've got the 2 inch one, to provide a little bit of extra width in the rear end. Um, these machines are perhaps a little uh, narrow which I guess is good and bad depending on what you're doing um, great if you need narrow access um, and you didn't have your mower deck on uh, but when you are mowing and if you're on any sort of um, any sort of slope they can feel a little unsettling um, so I uh, I had that feeling so I decided I'd stick those on um, I've got the eBay ones, there's some very expensive ones on um, US websites, but um, I just went the eBay ones and Touchwood, they have been fantastic, there's been no problems with those. Uh, very quick and easy to put on, using the, um, using the rear legs of the backhoe, you have those on in about uh, 15 minutes. Right, moving around to the front of the machine. Um, I think most, safe to say most BX23s uh, in Australia come with the 4-in-1 bucket. Um, I don't know how many, I, I can't say I've ever seen one without it. I guess it's a very common option. Um, people may choose the other one. Um, and it's got its pros and cons. Um, it is a lot smaller in capacity to um, the standard bucket, um, which can, depending on what you're doing, can be frustrating. Um, sometimes. The versatility of the 4 one however I guess makes up for that in that um, you can have other implements like I've got here. Um, again I've got the Art and Metal 4-in-1 um, um, tow bar if you like which uh, simply fits in between the you open the 4-in-1 and it fits on there um, and then provide you an instant um, instant tow ball to the front of your machine. We use that heaps. Uh, we use that a lot uh, if we just need to move the trailer around, get it to where we're working and then drop it off and then start using the loader for mulch for instance. Very very handy, uh, very quick to put on and off. Uh, my, latest, um, my latest acquisition is uh, the Quick Forks. Uh, they are made by a gentleman in Queensland um, and again I wish I'd had them before actually, they're, they're proving to be quite um, very very handy. Um, again, they just simply slip on the front of the bucket. Um, the Achilles heel probably for the BX23 is the lifting capacity of that front bucket. Um, I mean, it is it is a compact tractor, so you can't expect too much. Um, but really, um, once you get past the pins, uh, things like forks become yeah a little tricky, uh, a little tricky for capacity. So. Um, they are fairly short, those uh, forks, but they are still handy to loop things over and pick up logs and and um, and some smaller things like drums. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with them. Uh, wish I had them before. There's a few things I probably could have used them for. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much the front end. I'll talk about, uh, well, I said, um, the four-in-one bucket probably... And the situation that Australia faces itself in America, um, there's uh, the quick, quick attach uh, front end on these machines, which makes it very easy to swap out whatever um, you like on the front, whether it be a pallet fork or um, baling forks or or anything like that. A more traditional um, like posi track type connection, uh, but in Australia that isn't available for reasons I don't I don't understand why not, but um, it's probably the one of the the biggest disappointments, I guess, um, when we look at our American counterparts who, who have absolutely love this machine and they all run the um, quick attach uh, system on the front. 
Now, hidden away behind the backhoe is yet another uh, tow ball. Um, it's going to be very hard to see, uh, and I won't... Uh, I won't bother taking the back hour off to show you, but um, there is a space there from Aunt Metal. He's he's done up another um, done another great job of fabricating um, what we can't get in Australia, which is the um, the tow ball um, plate and and or hitch receiver. You can put a hitch receiver there. He's got that option as well. So um, full credit to uh, for him for filling in the void and. Uh, and a great gentleman to deal with as well. Uh, I've, I've been in contact with him a few times on some things that I bought and very helpful. So um, yeah, Art and Metal doing great things for BX23s in Australia. Little plug there, um, but uh, well deserved. Uh, the only other option I put on the tractor um, has been the mid-mount mower. So that was that's the 60 inch deck um and it was one of those things i was i'm an hiring you know there is there are smaller decks there's a 54 and um and uh at the end of the day uh, everyone just kept on telling me just get the 60 you won't regret it and they're absolutely right it's been a fantastic deck um it cuts beautifully for uh for what it is um can be a little hard to get on and off i guess um but you know that's the nature of these things uh, now that we've actually got a shed um, i'm hoping getting it on and off is going to be a little bit easier but uh, yeah relatively easy once you've done it a couple of times um, but on you know on soft or uneven ground trying to do it by yourself is very difficult um, it does weigh i think it weighs well over 100 kilos so sort of hard to maneuver um, unless you're uh, on hard ground and can use those um those rollers that you see so yeah but other than that really happy with the mower uh, and the tractor overall it's um it's been fantastic uh, i wanted something that everyone all the family can use and they certainly can you know it takes all of 15 15 minutes to get used to driving this machine um and people of all age sort of you know adapt to it and are straight on it so yeah fantastic uh the canopy up the top that's a bearing co again that was fitted by the dealer um and it was one of those things where i thought oh i don't really want a canopy but um um i guess now that i've used it and i've seen the benefit of it uh it is fantastic as well um just you know it gives you some relief off the sun in the winter um and of course if you get stuck doing it you know at the end of a job in a bit of rain or something it it does give you a little bit of shoulder and it covers that operator area quite nicely on the bx so um all right lucky last um now this is uh well this piece of equipment here uh accessory i wouldn't call it accessory i'd call it an insurance policy this is essentially under armor protection for the um machine uh that i bought off bx expanded and brought into australia now you might say why would you do that well unfortunately i learned the hard way why you would do that um so all up i think that cost me um four hundred dollars to bring into australia uh the cost of the item and the shipping which of course was ridiculous um and what that does or hopes to do is the achilles heel in this machine is when there is no mid-mount mower attached to the machine um the underbelly of the machine is quite exposed and probably the like i said the achilles heel of it is the hydrostatic fan which is basically underneath situated under roughly under where the driver seats sits um is uh attached to the pto shaft out of the motor now what typically happens is you're driving along and the front wheel picks up a, a stick we drive over a branch and it flicks up uh, the the only place that branch is going to uh, uh, head towards is that hydrostatic fan and um, because it is spinning at such a high rate and it's only made of plastic it gets destroyed within a second of that occurring so um, the flip side of that occurring is the cost to repair so the way that they currently repair 
hydrostatic fan that's broken on one of these at the moment at the dealer is it, it is literally unbolt the motor from the mount move the whole lot forward so they can free the um, PTO shaft um, to be able to slip the new fan around the um, around the shaft which is um, which is a pretty poor sort of design when you think about it um, given how easily the, the fan is to um, be broken so that plate uh, attempts to um, and it's a very clever design in itself so it's it's using um, essentially some mounts and the same action that raises and lowers the mower to pull itself into place um, which then covers the underbelly of uh, the machine uh, like I said we've got a hydrostatic fan under there as well as the fuel filter um, is also another frequent casualty of um, getting a stick uh, caught up from the front wheels so yeah it's um it's probably the downside of the machine i guess they could have done that a little bit better uh, or at least make it so um, it was uh, easier to replace so a lot of people have spoken about um, 3d printing their own into two pieces and simply screwing it together which may work i'm, I'm not sure but the um the uh the factory way it is done and the way that the dealers repair it it's um a very very costly mistake um, and that tray will pay for itself um, quite quickly so um, you, you only need to break one of those fans once and you've, you've paid for two of those not to mention the time it takes to have the machine repaired so I guess that's a bit of a negative of the machine but um, also why we've got the, the Under Armour plate there now a lot of people who I've spoken to who are in the market for a similar machine um, say would you buy it again um or what don't you like about the bx23 um would i buy it again given the situation that we are in for the property that we have and the things we are doing yes uh yes it's the right machine for us it's the right size um and does sort of everything we've asked it to do probably and we've asked it to do a lot and probably probably a little more than what it would have liked at times so yeah you know would i like a bigger loader sure when i'm moving gravel uh, gravel um sure i'd like to get that done faster and it would be great to have a bigger loader um would i like to be without the four and one no um i really like the four and one um i've uh, come to appreciate just how versatile they are so um you know it's a bit of compromise it's 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 i guess you need to buy whatever machine um you know, need, really need to think about use cases and what what you need in a machine if you can only buy one machine you really need to think about <clears throat> the pros and cons of each brand and around um what like what you're going to be doing the most with it and how it can deliver that so um you know the backhoe uh, is just such a handy thing for what we've been doing um you know we we mightn't use it that much moving forward i'm not sure and, and that's what we said about the machine in general if if all of a sudden we're only using the mower then maybe it's time to sell it and just buy a mower but at the moment um we use all of it uh, so you know we turn it into a giant ride on mower as you might have seen in some of the videos and other times it's 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 doing all the front end loading that we do to move piles of gravel around the place um you know the house pad over there that you know we got involved in that so without it um yeah it's just that multiplier of workforce right it, it just saves you so much time um so yeah i'd i'd absolutely buy it again given our situation um like i said i think there's there's always things that manufacturers can do to improve but um you know it's a pretty dang good machine the motor's very reliable doesn't use a lot of fuel um like i said it's it's easy to drive for the entire family it's not you know a big machine it's not daunting uh it's maneuverable so you know when we're mowing or moving around trees it it's got its place you know it can it can it's got a tight turning circle and take doesn't take up a lot of room so um it's got that going for it so yeah that's um that's my thoughts on um our Kubota bx23 or kenny as our family calls him uh kenny Kubota. but um yeah look i I, I'm really happy with it, and um, and I think um, the rest of the family is too. It's um, it's just been a 
a good machine to have as we've been on this journey of transforming this block into a home and hopefully it'll continue to do so anyway that's um that's my review i hope uh, hope you found it valuable and um hope you find it interesting around all the different sort of accessories and mods that we've done to it um i think each one's got its value um to, again given given your what you're using the machine for you really you really need my advice is for anyone buying a new one you really need to stop and think around what do i what am i going to be using this machine for and then um and just focus in on what whatever machine has the best attributes for you anyway i'll leave it there and uh hopefully in a in uh, another 12 months we can talk about it again